Hello everyone, welcome to Lead Code Daily Challenge. The problem for today is summary ranges. So let's jump in and check the problem description. You will be given a sorted unique integer array. That means the array that you get will have uh, numbers such that there won't be any repetitions and they will be in a sorted order. You need to return the smallest sorted list of ranges that cover all the numbers in the array exactly. That means every number from the array should be part of exactly one range that you form. So how do we form these ranges? Let's say you have uh, numbers uh, from A to let's say you have numbers from uh, A to B. So uh, if A is not equal to B, you need to uh, make a range such that A arrow B. This this is one range. If A is equal to equal to B, that means you just have to return A. So let's check the examples for uh, more clarity. Let's say you have uh, numbers 0, 1, 2, 4, 5, 7. So if you see these numbers are in sorted order and uh, you don't have all the numbers from the uh, list from 0 to 7. So there are some numbers missing in between. So you need to uh, prepare your ranges such that every number from this uh, list will be covered in one of the ranges. So if you see the output should be you have 0, 1, 2. So these are all uh, consecutive. But then after 2 you don't have 3. So after 2 you have 4. So there is a gap between. So you uh, make 0, 1, 2 as one range. Here you need to make the range uh, such that you need to take the first and last element of the range. So you prepare the range uh, with 0, arrow 2. So this is one range. Then you start from the next number. 4, then you have next number 5. Then the next number 6 is missing. So your range will end, end here. So uh, 4, 5 will be the new range. Here you don't have any numbers in between, but anyway, you take first and last number, so which is 4 and 5. So 4 and 5 will be the new range. Then you have only one number, 7. So you just have to return 7 without any arrow. So this way you have to form your ranges. So let's check the example 2. So you have 0, 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, 9. So some numbers are missing here. So when you start with 0, uh, the next number should be 1, but you don't have 1. So your range ends here. So the first range will be 0. Then you have 2, 3, 4. So you you just specify 2 and 4 which are first and last elements so 2 4 is your next range then you have 6 6 will be a new one more range then you have 8 and 9 so that is that will be the last range and you have an empty list here in the third example so you just return empty so in the fourth example you have only one number so minus 1 you just return a minus 1 as a string in the fifth, fifth example you have 0 one number so you just return 0 as a string so look at the constraints, the numbers can be, uh, array length can be from 0 to 20 and the numbers in mid, the number, uh, the value of the numbers can be uh, uh, minimum integer to max integer and all the num uh, values of the numbers are unique as mentioned earlier. So the constraints are uh, pretty simple. So what should be the approach that we should follow? So what will be the best method that to solve this problem? So what I will what I, what I feel is uh, we should solve this problem by intuition. So what do we mean by intuition? These kind of problems are best solved by intuition. So intuition means you just follow whatever is uh, mentioned in the problem. And you just take care of the condition that is that are specified in the problem. So here uh, they say the integers are already sorted. So you just uh, keep counting the numbers. And whenever you, uh, whenever you find that the next number in the list is not a sequence number that means it is not a uh, next number of the previous number then your range breaks so you just form one range uh, from that sequence then you just continue like that till you process the complete array so that's all you have to do so let's check the code uh, okay so let's take the size of the array so n so if n equal to equal to 1 so this is a special case because you just have to return uh, one number without any arrow so if n equal to equal to 1, you return a two string of numbers of 0. So the two string will give you a string representation of the number. So you just return that. So if n equal to 0, that we don't have to handle separately because if n equal to 0, uh, it won't go to the for loop. So it just returns empty range. So then uh, you take a start as 0. So start will be the start of every range. So you just have, you have to keep updating the start variable whenever you break your current range so there are uh, two things here that we need to take care 
so the last number uh, can be part of the part of the range that we have considered till previous number or it can be different from the uh, previous range so that is the only condition that we need to take care so our condition here will be so we keep uh, processing numbers till we get a number that is not a sequence so if numbers if the current number is not equal to the previous number plus one so it is not a uh, direct sequence then you break the sequence here and you form the range so you take a string variable you take the start number because we just need start and end numbers and if start is not equal to i minus one that means you have at least two numbers in the current range in that case you append arrow and the uh, last number of the sequence so numbers of i minus one because the current number is not equal to the previous uh, uh, the current number doesn't belong to the current range so you form the range so you push that range to your range variable which we need to return then you update the start variable to the current index so the new range start from the uh, current index i start then you have one more on uh, the special case that we have discussed the last number if the index is uh, equal to uh, number of size minus one so we can as well say n minus one because we have already taken n then we need to check if we need to add the current num uh, last number to the previous range or not so if the num uh, if the number is not equal to the current number is not equal to previous number plus one that means uh, the number is not part of the previous range so uh, the last number uh, based on that the start variable will be either equal to uh, current or it will, be, it will not be equal to uh, current i so uh, you uh, form the range with the last number so it can belong to the previous range or it can be a new range so you take uh, the start variable new string to form a new range and if start is not equal to i if the start is not equal to i that means the last number is not considered in the previous range so you add your uh, last number to the previous range so you add a uh, arrow and the last number of the sequence then you push the new range to the range uh, range variable then you uh, you don't have to update here because this is a last number of the sequence then you return finally return the range variable which contains all the ranges so let's execute and see So our answer is 0 to 4, 5, 7, 0 to 4, 5, 7. The second one is 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 9, 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 9. And empty array minus 1, 0. Yeah. It's correct. So let's submit and check time complexity. So the solution has been accepted. Let's check the time. Yeah, so all the test cases have been passed and the runtime is 0 milliseconds because the constraints here are uh, pretty small and we have uh, implemented a uh, efficient solution. We are not processing the array multiple times, we just process the array only once. And when it comes to space complexity, it will be in the order of O of n because uh, it will be in the approximately in the order of O of uh, n because if there are uh, if the numbers are uh, if the numbers in the array are not consecutive so every number will be considered as one uh, range so in that case you take uh, in order, uh, space in the order of o of n so thanks for watching do provide your feedback thank you